Hey guys, how's it going? Um, cheers to you. Sorry, I just have a crap load of stuff here. <laughs> and I realized that it's like not the stuff I wanted to bring out to talk about today. Anyway, anyway, excuse me. I'm actually taking notes when I shoot my videos so that I can pick up where I left off. And um, what we were talking about, Pat, we, as if we're all together here. It's kind of like we're all together. Um, goals. I started to, to like get off on this huge tangent, um, but I get really excited about this because it's given me so much clarity the end of this year and it's changed everything. I feel um, just seeing things this way, planning it, um, attacking it, actually taking action every day in some way, it has given me, uh, I mean, you can probably see it. Maybe, um, you know, if you've been around me in person, you know, people that were my friends have known I've been down, I've been frustrated, I've been stressed. Uh, I mean, the amount of times Amy's called me on the phone and I've been crying and, you know, like, oh my God, you know, sometimes it's, it's felt like this is, it's, it's too much, you know, and yet it's not. I just finally, I'm getting up every day with a spring in my step. I'm getting up every day excited as hell about next year. I'm getting up every day and as annoyed as I am. Okay, so I'm annoyed. Sorry about that hair thing. I am annoyed that this whole Achilles thing happened this year. I am annoyed that it set me back. I'm annoyed that I gained some of my weight back. But you know what? It's temporary because starting to just shift, figure out some therapeutic rehab kind of things that I can do on a regular basis to deal with this situation because it's clearly never going to completely go away. Now the body is starting to change again. You know, I can see it and. I, I would love to have been able to go flick a switch and the next day, you know, I'm right back to where I was September 1st before, you know, I got some of this little extra padding back. But no big deal, because you know what? I know what it takes and it's not the end of the world and um, it's, it's pretty exciting. I'm surrounded by great people. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling. I thought that I had this on backwards for me. Um, and I'm going to get to do a lot of cool, awesome things. I have an understanding, a better understanding of the Achilles thing, which enables me to um, be active, but be active appropriately for me. Um, sorry, I thought I stepped on something. Um, anyway, so back to the goals thing. Um, you know, what I talked about in my last video was just this, this overwhelming clarity as I came back from Miami and I said, you know, this is it. I'm not just talking about moving to Miami, I'm moving to Miami. And this, you know, uh, understanding and awareness I had of, you can't just say you're going to move and think that, you know, August is going to roll around and all the things are going to come together. Your, your house will just be ready waiting for you. You'll be able to move, blah, blah, blah. Everything, will, the miracles will happen. No. And once I sat down and said, okay, what is it that I want to do? And then I recognized my immediate tendency, talked about this in the last video, we all have this tendency to go, oh, well, I just want a little bit more. I don't, I don't need to shoot that high. When you say that to yourself, when you say that to yourself about, I don't, you know, no, I'm not a, I don't need to run the marathon. A lot of people start running and you go, oh, some runners get a little aggressive with this. You should do a 5K and your immediate response is, oh no, you know, I'm not a runner, I just want to do this. It, it, I feel that we all do that because deep down inside we're, we're scared. We're scared of, and scared doesn't have to be terror. Sherry and I were having this, this text discussion. When you're scared of something, it doesn't necessarily mean you're like, oh, I'm scared of that. Scare, or when I say you're scared of something or you, you fear something, it can, mean, it can mean you avoid something because it's uncomfortable. But deep down inside, like you're scared of rejection. You are, you're scared to fail. Um, and so that's why I think a lot of us, we only shoot for this because deep down inside, we don't think we can do it. And we don't want other, we don't think we can get up here. And so we don't want to tell everybody, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run a half marathon next year, or I'm going to, um, I'm going to compete in, in figure bodybuilding next year. I'm going to get up on stage and I'm going to do it. I'm going to be at, you know, 12% body fat. 
because you think everyone's gonna look at you and go, Psh. I mean, first of all, how great would it be to put some really great goals out there and do it? Because I'll tell you this, once you do put your goals out there and ask some of your friends, people, of course, soft plug, in, in the fit financial community say I need you know I need your support I need your guidance I need I'm gonna need your 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 confidence booster people will guide you through it and you're gonna feel so much better than if you just aimed low nobody gets to the end of their life and says oh yeah I'm glad I just you know went for the bare minimum I'm really glad I did that I'm so glad that I played it safe <laughs> no most people go I really wish I would have done this I wish I would have taken that trip I wish I would have you know asked this woman to marry me I wish I would have you know whatever you, you, they always say you regret more in life the things that you, um, you regret more in life the things you didn't do than the things that you did. Okay, so, oh, it's birds outside. Sorry. Anyway, um, so don't aim low. That might sound really silly, but but recognize it in yourself that you will have a tendency to go. No, I don't need to do this. I just need to do this. I don't. You know, I don't. Next year, I'm not gonna. You know, say I'm making $25,000 a year. Well, I just like it if I made 30. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't mean you're a greedy jerk if you would like to make 50,000. And if you want to do it, you need to figure out what that means for you. If you are an account executive making 25,000 a year and you want to be uh, making 50,000 a year, what? Who makes $50,000 a year at your at your um, organization? You know, maybe it's um, you know, a manager, executive manager. What will it take for you to get there? And then what you do is you go to your, your boss or your hires up. Hires up, is that the right way to say it? Higher ups? I'm gonna have to look that one up. And say, here's my goal. I really like this company. This is what I wanna do. I know I have potential. Can you show me what I need to do so that by the end of this year, I can, you know, complete, it's like college or high school. I can complete these courses so that I will then be, you know, if you're telling me that if I complete all of this, 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 and this, and I have this education and this experience, you would be willing to give me, and then, then you have something to, to work towards, and it's measurable. Then you have a baseline, right? You have that, you have that uh, baseline of what you need to measure so that you can get there. If you just say, well, I'm going to aim, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm going to earn more. Someone's going to notice. What are you shooting for? How are you going to measure it? If you don't have a list, say in that work scenario, if you don't have a list of all the things you need to do that year, month by month that you can check off, how do you know you're on your way? Because what's gonna happen is you'll get to October and go, oh crap. And now you're looking at, at two months of activity and it's the holidays. You've got to plan it out. And let me tell you, when you do plan it out that way and you work backwards, okay, whether it's finances or weight loss or um, building muscle, whatever it is, when you start to look at things and you chunk it down, guys, this is stuff I've talked about before, but it didn't, it wasn't sinking in in the right way with me, okay? I was getting up every day, going into my office and feeling dread and overwhelmed. Why? Because I looked at the totality of everything I had to do. I looked at all of these calls I had to return, all of these emails I had to do, all of these proposals, all of this training I had to do. This, this person needs me. I need to go here. And then I would say to myself, without even realizing, I can't do this. I'm too stressed. I don't want to do it. So it's this constant stream of negativity. And I, I never I t figured out a plan. Now what I've done, and, and a lot of this is tied too to my goal, to move to Miami because now once I came back and I'm like okay this is what I need to do and the business is in the right place for me to do it and then I started to kind of test a few things out and just by testing a few things out it showed me like oh, it's not only doable it is beyond doable okay I don't want to get into details for that but sometimes we just get so scared and I'm gonna use that term scared you know, uh, we dread things, but we don't do anything about it, okay? So I was stressed and freaking out and down and, you know, full of agony about work and, and how much pressure I was under and how bad I felt. And I felt like I can never take time off because there's so much work to do. But you know what? Instead of actually formulating a plan, I was just getting on the phone and bitching about it with a lot of people and, and getting stressed out and going, oh, I need to take a break. I need to, I can't, I can't do that. I got to put it off. And then, then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. We make things bigger and bigger and bigger because we refuse to address it. And then it becomes, 
an insurmountable task in our heads because of our lack of just dealing with it. And you'll find that once you just deal with something, it's so much, not necessarily easier, but it is, it's, it's easier in many respects to just deal with it. And then once you do that first thing or you make that first sales call and, and you get rejected and then you, you make two or three and you get rejected, but then you get that sale, then all of a sudden you're like, oh snap. It's no big deal when someone rejects me. And then you start to go, oh, okay. And of course I'm talking about this from like a sales perspective, but you can apply this in so many other areas. It's a numbers game, okay? Not everybody that I call if I'm in a sales role is going to say yes to me. But if I only call two people, chances are the best, the best I'm gonna get, let's be real. If I call two people, two people are not gonna say yes to me. Well, with me, yes, I'm just kidding. If I call two people, probably the best I can get is one. 50%, that's, that's a really, you know, but if I call 20, I could get 10. If I call, if I call 200, I could get 100. Maybe my odds will get better and better and better because my attitude is going to get better when I'm on the phone because I'm going into that like, yes, I got this, as opposed to, <sighs> okay, I'm going to give it another call because this person is going to say no. And they answer the phone and you're like, hi, uh, yeah, I was wondering, do you feel like talking? Is it's a good time? It's kind of like when I was like 19 and I tried to use a fake ID and I was like, <laughs> um, anyway, what, what time is that? I'm at 12 minutes. So, um, you have to, it, it's all about taking action. It's all about having a plan. It's all about not being scared to recognize what your, your goals are. So with weight loss, I guess, and, and with personal development or, or whatever, I think sometimes Finances really could be anything. I think we, we put off really stating it as it is, really being honest with ourselves because we're in denial. We, and we'd rather stay in denial where it's comfortable, where nothing great happens and nothing, maybe we think nothing worse will happen. But yeah, it does, because it's more like a slow slide into much worse. We just don't notice it. That's what happens with weight gain. You just don't notice it. And then, you know, you don't realize that all of a sudden, you know, because then you just keep wearing um, sweats or sweatshirts and you're, you're not putting on tight workout clothes that let you see, oh, there's a little bit of fat below my bra line there. You're not, you're not looking for things in yourself. You're not tracking things. You're not paying attention. And so you just progressively start wearing bigger jeans and then you think, oh, this, you know, oh, I'm just getting older. So of course I'm going to gain weight. Well, I'll just go up a size. Well, then you go, if you're a guy from a 26, probably 28, 28, and then the next year you're 30, and the next year you're 32, and pretty soon you're at like a 40 inch waist. And you're like, it's no big deal. A lot of guys at work are 40. So you hang out with those people that you're comfortable with, or you hang out with people that you're thinner than, so you think you look better, as opposed to going, what's my personal best? Somebody very easily might look at me and go, Kelly, what are you talking about? You know, you don't need to look white. You've got a great figure. I don't think I have a horrible figure. I know I'm a really good size. I'm at, you know, a, a healthy, I could, I could stay where I'm at right now and be healthy and not certainly not ashamed of myself or anything but on the other hand for my frame and for my bone structure and and where I know you know the fat is I know I can do better and that's for me and that's my decision not not anybody else's decide where you want to be be ridiculously honest with yourself and being ridiculously honest with yourself doesn't mean beating yourself up because if you go into this and you say, I'm gonna be honest with myself, but I know I can do it. I know that I can take steps to better my situation, whether it's work or finances or a relationship or whatever. Now, that said, sometimes you can make a plan and you can aim for something and it might not work out the way you want, but maybe it's gonna be the thing after that. We'll get in, I'll get into that in like another, another thing, because believe me, I've certainly aimed for something and done the right thing and it hasn't, the right thing hasn't happened back to me, you know? When I was going through my divorce, I did all the right things, okay? My, my ex-husband cheated on me, and I did all the right things, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna be supportive, I'm gonna be, be willing to work through it, blah, 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 and let me tell you, he basically was like, you know, kept walking on and was like, I'm just gonna kick the dirt on you and, and, and not look back. You can't always have things work out for you, and at that moment, that was so devastating to me. But I can say this, and I'm not being immature or hateful or spiteful when I say this. This is just a fact. That was the best thing that could have happened to me. 
And it's, it was the beginning of several years of ridiculously stressful, crazy times, high drama, job loss, lawsuits, all kinds of weird stalkers. I mean, when you, if I ever publish this book, you'll, you'll hear all of that. But I can look back now and go, that had to happen. Because you know what? If that hadn't happened, I would never be doing what I'm doing today. I never would have saw myself as an entrepreneur. I never would have gotten the job that I got, which ended up helping me see that I could found this company and now be making an impact on so many people's lives, okay? So everything happens for a reason. It's at least when you have the attitude of, okay, if I put my plan together and this didn't work out, good has come out of it because I've learned how to do this, I have a new skill, whatever, and now I'm going to you move on to the next thing, okay? You have to have that ability, that resiliency to bounce back, whether, again, it's personal, professional, weight loss, whatever. Um, with weight loss, I've talked about this before, with weight loss, with um, getting chiseled, with building muscle, whatever, the more that you understand that each of our bodies, and there's, there's a scientific um, fit for each one of us. There's a certain diet approach that's gonna work for me, and it might not work for you, okay? Somebody else can have a vegan diet and have a ton of carbs and whatever, and it works. Um, other people can have lactose or milk, and, and it works. Other people, you I mean, you will find what works for you. It's not impossible. So, the goals you want to achieve are not impossible, and the more you realize, you might go a certain direction and not get quite where you want, but you've made some progress, the more that you can go, okay, I put my goals together, I did this, here's what I'm happy with, here's what I'm not, then you you figure out what you need to tweak for the next step. And it's a lifelong journey, you know? As when I'm 70, when I'm 80, I'm not gonna be able to do the same type of movement and workouts that I am now, but I'm gonna tweak, and I'll tweak probably what I eat, how I move, whether I'm doing yoga, running, walking, whatever, swimming, so that I can be right for that point in my life. It's constant tweaking and figuring out what works for you. But you have to understand that too, so that as you figure your goals out, sometimes you will make a plan and it won't always end up with the outcome that you want immediately. But that doesn't mean you go, screw this, forget it. It's all for good. Everything, as long as you're working towards a plan and you're making steps and you're improving and you're learning, then it's all for good. Okay, so be ridiculously honest with yourself, work backwards, and get a plan. It's so much different. I don't know why I'm so seeing this now. It's so much different to really, really put a plan together because now when I say, okay, here's where I wanna be financially, and this is what I need to do to get here a year from now. This is now what I need to be focused on. So now every day when I go into my office, not only am I doing things differently, with dealing with work, okay? But I'm going to my office and, and I make myself look at realtor.com every single night because now I know these, some of these houses that I think I'm gonna be living in. And I'm like, when I get down, I'm like, think about your house, think about your house. That's what you're working towards. When you are frustrated and you don't like, you know, you, maybe you're thinking you want pizza or whatever, um, and you're working on your diet and you're working on your working out, but you're frustrated. You know, you can't think about what you want right then I mean, it's, it's when, when it was New Year's Eve, I remember getting up going, you know, well, you know, I've got this plan and I've got, you know, I've got my Betty Rocker recipes, I've got all this stuff, I've got my blend tech. Well, I should just, you know, we should just order pizza tonight because it's New Year's Eve, let yourself, and then I'm like, well, you know what, I can. It's not that that's a, that big of a deal, but what started to override that is that what's more important to me is getting where I wanna be than to stuff my face for an hour. It's just, and it doesn't mean that, I, I'll have Giordano's pizza, but just not right now. Because what I wanna do is visualize where I wanna go and what it's gonna take to get me there. If you just have this random idea of what you want, you don't have a way to get there. You don't know when you've gotten off track because you don't have a track to follow, okay? You gotta have something to follow, you gotta have something to measure, and frankly, I think that's what makes the journey go by sometimes faster, is when you have something that you can say, okay, I'm gonna track this every week, and every week I'm gonna to get to the end of the week, and I'm gonna look at what I did this week, and then I'm gonna use that, then it doesn't seem so overwhelming, like, wow, I have nine months of dieting. 
or, or whatever. See what I'm saying? You just look at what's in front of you, you have a plan, and then once you achieve what you want to do that first week, it's like those sales calls. Then you go into the next, the next week and you're like, this is what I did last week. I mean, I'll tell you this, when I get on my game, you can't tempt me. Krispy Kremes, maybe. Always gonna be tempting. But I just get to the point where I'm like, I'm doing so well, you can't stop me. It's like a salesperson. Once a salesperson gets on a roll, once you get your first sale, you are so motivated and the no's don't seem like a big deal. Those first few no's, you're like, oh snap, there's everyone saying no to me. Trust yourself, don't worry about what other people think. Be ridiculously honest with yourself and work backwards. And then make your plan. Your plan should start where you want to be and work backwards. I'm going to talk about this to you. Get sick to death with me. I promise. See you guys tomorrow.